G'day, g'day, Comrade subscribers. So, I thought one quick way just to see if there's any obvious issues. I don't, can't see that there would be because if there was something that was shorted or whatever, then it would be drawing a lot more current. So at the moment, it's only drawing 500 milliamps, 2.6 watts. But I thought I've been let, I let it run for a few hours just to see if there's anything in particular that's that's too hot. So let me just. I'll do it like this so I can uh, synchronize, start recording. So we've got the Z80 there, that's not too hot, 45 degrees. There's one chip up here. This one there, is it? That's just standing out a little bit. What's that one there? I will check. Otherwise, we've got the RAM. It looks like that's the RAM there. A tiny little hotspot up here. Which one's that one? That one's that one there. Okay. Third from the end. So we've got third from the end on that side. One, two, three, four, five. Fifth from the end on that side. So I've got the RAM there. Got the Z80 there. Um, this is probably the hottest spot there. That's what, 70 something degrees? What is that? Must be a transistor. There we go. Whoops, sorry. Yeah, it's a transistor right there. Small little red one. It's very hot. That's the hottest part on the board, I think. Um, yeah, that's a transistor there. Okay, we'll check that one out. Otherwise, fourth from the bottom. Otherwise, yeah, this is all the all the DRAM here. So yeah, hottest thing is the transistor, but nothing else really stands out. So I'll stop recording. I think I'll just do that. I think that stopped it. I can never remember. Turn it off. Okay. So um, there are there are a few improvements that can be done. One in particular that caught my eye was um, this one here. So the data bus is not pulled up to five volts through resistors, which causes all sorts of garbage to appear on the bus, which is what we saw yesterday when reading from non-existent ports and in the interrupt confirmation cycle. All this causes glitches in programs. Well, ours isn't even working. So just to solder eight uh, pull-up resistors, so, so eight points of values, 10K, to the data bus and connect them to five volts. So that's one thing that we can do um, on the Z80. So I'm just trying to think what the best way. I look at some pictures and there is quite, I don't know if it was captured in the printout. But, um, no, it might not be in the printout. On the website it is. Well, if you click on one of the pictures, one of the links, there's quite a, oh, there's, okay, you can't really see it, but you can click on it. Uh, it's got quite a nice ground. <laughs> you see quite a thick grounding strip, and up here is a big grounding section, whereas you can see here, <laughs> very, very different. Anyway, so CPU... CPU there, um, so data bus is on this side here. Let me just power this off, it's been running long enough. So, oh. um, yeah, it was this side here, wasn't it? Yep. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out, so I think that might be, that might be ground, I'm not sure what that is. Let me just check continuity. Um, let's see, 5 volts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I think that's 5 volts there. Alright, so this strip here, that strip there is 5 volts. 
Anyway, I will try and figure out how to do this. So that might be one thing we can do, but I don't think it's going to fix the problem, but it might clear up the database a bit. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's that transistor. And I actually just... It's quite wobbly. <laughs> it's a little bit too wobbly for something that's soldered in properly. So and actually, I think it might be one of the... Let me just have a look at the notes. Um, I'm not sure which one that is. Looking at it at another angle there. That's the fellow there. Uh, it just seems a bit too too wobbly. I could reflow the solder. And I'm just trying to see what the part number is. No, it's not. I think it's a separate. There is there is some separate documents detailing other I think there was something there about a, a power about it well it's a diode perhaps not a transistor but it is it is probably okay I did it's just a little wobbly but it does look to be I'm trying it does look to be um, correctly installed well not correctly installed but it does seem to be reliably installed Anyway, something to look at. But first, try and figure out how to add these pull-ups. Uh, maybe from here to the power supply rail. Hmm. G'day, g'day, comrade subscribers. Let's uh, see if we can make some progress today, shall we? So, where were we? Uh, basically there's no video output, there's no RGB output, there's no sync, there's no composite output. Um, the data bus looks like a mess. <laughs> and um, the halt pin, which is active low on the Z80, is low the whole time. So it looks like the CPU was stopped, not running. So... Let's try and pull the CPU out, I guess. Uh, it's not socketed. So the the ROMs are socketed, but the, the CPU isn't. It looks like an East German uh, UB880D 88, uh, or something. Or a U880D. So um, it'd be nice to keep it. But if it's not working, it's not working. So I'll try and pull it out. And uh, socket it. And see if that makes a difference right so got most of the solder out we'll see what the other side looks like so it's a little bit brown because i added some flux so let's see let's try and lever it out put the socket in Okay, I'm going to try and do this one-handed, but looks like it's coming out. So the left-hand side's all right. Okay. So normally yeah, I'd do two hands for this, but... Yeah, it's just to hold it down, but yeah, it's pretty much coming out. So then we'll socket it. See if it makes any difference. All right, so once again, you can see the way the socket replacement socket doesn't um, fit. That it was uh, definitely a Soviet 2.5 mil pitch part, so definitely probably East German. Certainly wasn't Western. So yeah, so I'm going to have to kind of uh, arch it in the middle to make it fit. But yeah, I want to. I don't. Has anyone designed a daughter board for this 2.5 mil to 2.54? If not, I'll, I'll I'll design one because I'm seemingly I need need to uh, use them quite a bit. Anyway, let me get this sorted. So we'll get a Z80 in and um, see if that makes any change. Then we'll start doing some other mods, like adding um, pull-up resistors, like they have done here. All right, I've got a genuine Zolog. 2021 um, year Z80, 10 megahertz capable. Um, no image. 
So let's uh, let's check the oscilloscope. But I did check the halt line. The halt line is now, or the halt pin is now high. It's no longer low. <laughs> but uh, everything else look, still looks shit house. So there's still some work to do. Right, let's start. So we'll start at pin 20, IRQ, active low. So it's generally high. I think I did see one or two. Okay, pin 19, which is, uh, was it memory request? Active, active low. Whoops, let me just, so there is activity there. Looks okay, shaped. Now the halt pin 18 is now high. So before it was low all the time. So that is an improvement. Pin 17 NMI, active low. That looks crap, doesn't it? I don't know, what do you reckon? It does look a bit... No. It doesn't really look... <laughs> yeah, okay. So that's NMI, pin 17. Pin 16, so is it uh, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. Which is uh, interrupt, active low. What does it say? Lots of high frequency there. That looks pretty square to me. <laughs> so that's interrupt. Uh, D1, pin 15. So again, the data doesn't look, the data lines look pretty shit house. Um, let's just. Yeah, um, so that's D1. That looks, I don't know, my humble opinion, that looks pretty shit house. So um, that's D1, D0, pin 14. Again, similar sort of rubbish. Doesn't really look right, does it? Uh, pin 13, D7. So all the data lines I think are going to be the same, similar. A bit of ringing or something there. Um, address lines in comparison look okay. So this is pin 1, which is A11. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? Uh, pin 11, uh, sorry, pin 1, pin 2, which is A12. So they all look pretty good. Uh, clock. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is pin 6 now. So that's the clock, yeah. I think, yeah, I, I agree. I think the clock looks pretty ordinary. Uh, Frequency is about right. 3.45 megahertz. But yeah, it's looking, I don't know. <laughs> Looking a bit, yeah, and I get, yeah, so it is actually, yeah, if you look at it, it is, does look to be about four volts, doesn't it, not five volts, because it's two volts per division, was it Christian, was it Christian that mentioned it, so, let's go back to the address pin, A, uh, A11, so that's right, that's five volts, so the, yeah, that's five volts. Whereas we look at the clock, so it is. Do it must be doing something because we are, you know, outputting address. Yeah, that's the clock there. That's one volt per division. That's two volts per division. Yeah. Okay. A bit ordinary. Um, what about read? Active low, pin 21. That looks a bit weird, doesn't it? Is that right? Should it be like that? So again, yeah, you're right. It's um, 4 volts, not 5 volts. It's interesting. Right. 
Right's looking better. That's that's be about five volts almost. Active low. Bus ack pin twenty three. That's five volts, so that looks okay. Uh, weight. Ooh. Weight active low pin twenty four. Ooh. Uh, what do you reckon about that? <laughs> uh, bus request, pin 25. Let's have a look at pin 25. Okay, I don't, oh, is, it, is this something that's used? Oh, okay. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Uh, bus request, pin 25, active low. Alright. Uh, reset, active low. Obviously that's going to be high. Uh, press the reset button. Goes low. Okay, uh, M1, pin 27, active low. Uh, refresh, pin 28, active low. Uh, then ground and then the rest, rest of the address pins. Doesn't seem to be any. So A10, pin 40. Interesting. Um, pin 1 again. Ooh. Why is there no activity? Pin 21. Pin 22, pin 23, pin 24, weight, active low, pin 25, pin 26, pin 27, M1. Mm, okay. Press the reset button again. Now we've got some activity. So this is uh, pin 40. Oh, I just got, <laughs> I did just get a brief signal on the screen. And now it stopped. What did I, what did I knock? I put that. Oh, I'm touching something on the board. There's certainly no address activity anymore, is there? Pin 1, A11. Reset. Now there is. It was a clock pin six, two, three, four, five, six. There's the okay. There's the rubbish clock still. I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? It's the rubbish clock, and then D four pin seven. Not much data there. Reset button. Yep, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pull-ups on the data lines. I don't know if that's going to improve anything. Hmm. Okay. Let's make up a 10K resistor array, Soviet style. Uh, good evening comrade subscribers, thanks for sticking around if you've made it this far into the video. So I think I'm just going to look at the clock I think for the last bit of this part. Um, in relation to that, one thing that Karsten noticed, I think it was Karsten, 
was that some of the voltage levels were about four volts. So at the moment, I've got this set on two volts per division or whatever. So four volts is that line, and then five volts is halfway um, up the next one. And some of them were on four volts. So including the clock going into the into the Z80. So I just wanted to check, have a look at the clock. So let me just double check. So clock pin, clock pin is pin six on the Z80. So let me have a look, it's powered on. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it doesn't really look that good either. So you can see that it's actually just under four volts. Am I holding it right? It's not really getting what's the trigger. What's the trigger level? Yeah, alright. So frequency should be higher than that, shouldn't it? Yeah, anyway. So I don't know, does I don't I'm not an expert. <laughs> Duh. But probably not the best clock signal. And it's just under 4 volts. So I don't know if I run, stop. Can I do, I don't normally do the measurement stuff on here, do I? Channel 1, 3.36 volts actually. VMAX is 3.44. Um, yeah, alright. So it's not even reaching 4 volts. The reason why I, I bring that up, um, okay, the reason why I bring that up is, well, let's uh, switch views. So the reason why I bring that up is when I look at the schematic and when I also compare it with, say, a um, generic homebrew spectrum, um, pretty much I guess what we're expecting is a, well, a 5 volt kind of nice pulse. I think that's my assumption so this is the schematic here um, so we've got the crystal here and actually I think the crystal crystal is rated at ooh, something like that 13 something 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 thousand um, kilohertz or yeah something like that so the clock circuit here is here so we've got a pair of knot gates and another knot going into a flip-flop then going into another flip-flop and then coming out to be this RAS signal here. So it's actually, um, if you have a look at the, uh, I don't think it's on here, but yeah, so actually the RAS signal is, is connected to into the clock pin on the Z80. And this pretty much is the same as this generic one here, So, but they're using NAND gates instead. So we've got a 14 megahertz crystal, NAND, 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 get 14, um, well, 14 megahertz out, and then stick it through some flip-flops to Harvard or something like that. So that's different to how they do it on the on the genuine specy. Again, having a look at this book, pretty good book. Um, let's power this this one off. So another section on CPU clock, memory contention, video addressing, internal clocks, oscillator, page eighty-seven. So, so that's how it works on a genuine specy. So we've got a 14 megahertz crystal here, and then it goes into this circuit here, which I think is in the ULA. Um, yeah, just goes into the ULA. Blah 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 blah. I don't know if it actually just shows shows it in here. No. Anyway, so it's a little bit different because yeah. So. On on our circuit, so it's marked as DD1, DD1.1.2 and dot three for the three gates. So I just need to find those. Let me have a look. Here we go. So I've got DD1 in the corner here, which is a K555 LN1, and this is DD9. So that's the knot gates, and this is the flip flop K555 TM2. So, yeah, and then that goes off, yeah, to to generate the RAS, which, yeah. So I'm going to just have a look at the 
um, at the signals around here just to see what they look like. Okay, connect this up to ground. Where can I use? I'll use that one. That one there is ground. All right. Okay, so input to DD1.1, so pin 1 from the crystal. So that's 1 volt. So that's DD1. And output is pin 2. Oh, we've got a green screen on the on the display doing that. Well, let's go to two volts. All right. So it's about two volts. So that's the output. I want them then. That is also then connected to pin three, which is the input of the next one. And then the output, which is pin four. And then that's connected to the input of the third one, which is pin five. Uh, and then the output is pin six. All right, so we got the three volts. Okay. Now the output of the first flip flop is, well, we'll take it, so six, so it's inverted. So pin six, that goes to the second, so, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, let's actually look at pin three. So pin three is the input. One, two, three. So, yeah, so pin three is the input. Pin six is the inverted output. One, two, so it's pin six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the output. About seven megahertz, okay. Three point five volts, and then that goes to pin eleven on the same chip. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, and then the output of that chip, oh, of that inverted, or well, actually not inverted. So pin nine, which is RAS. Um, so Pin 11, so pin 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's the output there. I can get it. So that's looking about 5 volts actually, isn't it? 4.8 volts. So that's the clock that's being generated. I don't know, should it look square if it's coming out of a flip-flop? Okay, so that's RAS, so then that goes to pin 11. One, two, three, was it? pin? No, that's pin 6, was it pin 6? Pin 11 is um, 5 volts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, okay, now that looks like 5 volts now, doesn't it? So the voltage is high this time. V max so five volts. That's huh? What? Oh, oh. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's intermittent. Frequency looks about right. Three point four four, and it is actually now five volts. Yeah, 4.95, 4 4.1 varying. Mm, God. <laughs> Could that be the problem? Let's have a look again at the output of the flip flop. Pin 9. Um, how many pins were there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 3, 
let's just monitor that. Oh, interesting. All right, what's the input? Input to that is pin 11. So that's the output from the previous flip-flop. So let's have a look at the previous flip-flop, pin 6. That's the inverted output. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6.8 6.9 megahertz input and then we're getting you know we're halving that 3.5 that kind of looks okay doesn't it it's not collapsing so i wonder if i need to replace this what what do you reckon And or you know the crystal. It's an odd. Should I just up it to 14 megahertz? I think I might. Have, I'm not sure if I got 14. I might do. No, pin nine. So pin nine is the output again. So was it one, two, three, four, five, six? Seven, okay, so yeah. So pin nine. Interesting. And then it collapses. Oh. Hmm. Let me just um, buzz that out. So, so that's the that's the knot gates, and that's the uh, the flip flop. So pin six going into pin eleven, and then pin 9 coming out, which is that one there, 8, 9, and then pin 6 is the clock input, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah, so it's a pretty much straight connection. I'm not sure what the equivalent is, I'll, no doubt I'll put it on the screen when I'm editing, um, so I'll have to see, what do you reckon, should I replace this one? It might help the clock, but I don't, you know. Not sure if it's going to fix. It's still got no video, so I'm not sure if it's going to fix that. It, but it continues. I'm continue. Work. I don't know why I'm spending so much time on this thing. <laughs> it's interesting, um, but yeah, you know, it deserves it deserves another shot at life. So uh, yeah, all right, that's it for now. Um, I think this will be long enough. Let me know. Bye.